So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to properly clean an aftermarket air filter. Uh, in the title of the video, I said K&N. For me personally, I got this from Mountain, but really it's just rebranded by Mountain, originally built by K&N. And I think that's the brand that a lot of you are going to be using. So what you need for this on the Focus ST uh, is a socket wrench with an extension and an 8 millimeter fixture on the end. You're also going to need the recharge kit and a quick life hack here is if you uh, I got this for I think eleven dollars and some change at advanced auto parts I bought it online picked it up in the store and it saved me 25 or 20 percent by purchasing it online first and then picking it up in the store so just a good savior there and also I have this uh, stock air filter that came with the car so what I'm going to do is actually put this stock air filter back in here while I'm working on this one. I'll use this for today and I'll explain why a little later in the video. So let's get this air box off and get the uh, aftermarket filter out. So like I said, uh, it's going to be very simple here. You're going to get uh, this right here, this bolt, this one. There's one down in there. Uh, where is it at? There it is, down at the bottom. And then there's this one again right up front. The only trick here that I want to make you aware of is this, for this back bolt that's down right about there, you need to loosen it and don't try and pull it up off of the uh, air box. Actually just loosen it to the point where you can pull the air box up and after you pull it up it'll pull the bolt up because if you try to pull this up there's a chance that you lose it down in the engine bay and you definitely don't want to do that. So just loosen it, pull up on the air box. Some nice debris caught up in there. And actually you can see, so when I purchased this originally, it was red. All of that has been wiped away and that's actually why I got the thought to um, go ahead and, and service this part. So I got, I don't remember the mileage I got this at, but it's been at least 10,000 miles since I have done anything with it. It's probably been, yeah, it's probably 10 to 14,000 miles is, is what I have on this filter right now. So I think it's time to clean it up. I mean, if you see in here, there's grass, there's leaves, there's pollen, there's all kinds of stuff in this filter. And I think it's good to uh, just get it cleaned up as soon as possible here. So you can see that was very easy to get off. I actually left all the bolts in, just lift it up like I said. Um, that way I don't have to worry about tracking any bolts down. So we'll set this aside, unscrew this, and put the stock one back in. Easy. There's actually some junk down in the air box. Got to clean that out. Well, not a lot. But here's here's a look at the filter. Take a look. There's actually some debris in the filter. A lot of dust and stuff. But being in Arizona, that's expected. That's why I'm changing this because there is a lot of just like the Mountain logo on the inside there. All right, so the stock filter is back on and totally secure. Uh, there's two, there's like a little slit where the stock filter and actually the aftermarket, aftermarket filter that I have, uh, they fit right back in there. It makes it extremely stable. So that's all good there. I'm gonna put the case back on. We're gonna head inside and uh, show you the process for cleaning this, cleaning the uh, aftermarket one off. Now, the reason that I kept this stock filter was specifically for this. Um, when I clean this filter, I'm actually going to let it sit and dry for about 24 hours before I put it back in. I just want to make sure that it is absolutely and totally dry, um, and I'm not rushing that at all. And there's no reason just because it's so easy to replace this. So that's why I'm doing that. It's just an extra step that I added in. I think it's worth doing if you didn't already throw away your, uh, your OEM filter. Okay, so we are inside now. We've got this mountain filter here and it has it has stuff some like little pieces of debris all through it but luckily they all stopped here and nothing got through the inside of this filter is very clean so what I'm going to do is just kind of shake it off first or hit it off and you can there's stuff 
all through the sink here. So I think I've got most of it out. There we go. Set that aside. still a bunch of, I don't know how well you can see that, but there's heavy layers of dust and dirt all around the edge of this filter. Um, but there's no unordinary wear, everything seems to be held together very well, and I would expect that from uh, Mountain Tune and also K&N, because they're both uh, some high quality companies. So, now that we got all the excess dust in, uh, it's time to it's time to uh, spray on the cleaner uh, and get this just soaked with uh, as much cleaner as possible. So let's get that opened up. Power clean with a K. Shake it up a little bit. Okay, I'm just going to take this cleaner and spray it lucratively all over uh, this, this filter. essentially. Um, and after looking at this filter, it really is durable. It's well built. Um, doesn't, there's no signs of wear at all. So that's really happy with that. So now I need to put the oil on. 
uh, the air filter oil. So one, the most important thing to note here is you're only going to be putting it in on the air intake side. So where the air is going to be coming in is where you're going to be spraying on the oil. Uh, the reason for this is because if you sprayed it on the inside, all this air is being sucked in through here and some of the oil particles are going to be taken into the engine and you do not want that. So uh, that's why you're only spraying it on the sides with uh, where the air is coming in. So let's uh, go ahead and put this on. And this is another thing, um, you don't want to overdo it. But it's not the more the better, it's, uh, it's probably the less the better and you just want to put a nice even layer across uh, the entire air intake. Do a quick, uh, I haven't sprayed this yet, so I'm going to just test it in the trash can. Okay, seems to be working fine. angles to make sure it gets down in the ravines. So now we brought that red coloring back on the air filter. Got a little on my hands and a little excess. And I'm, gonna I'm actually going to wipe that off with a paper towel. Uh, and I guess this is one more area we have to get here. So I'm going to go ahead and spray this interior and it should all be looking about this shade red. And again, I'm going to let it even uh, sit for tonight. I'm in no rush to put it back in the car because I have the stock one back in. Um, I'll wipe all the excess off and then we will be good to go. We'll be back in action with this air filter. And I'm also going to show you a clip here right at the end, just the sound difference between both the filters. Uh, driving to work today when I had my um, stock filter in, it's amazing how quiet the car is. There's no induction sound. Uh, but with this in there and also with no end cap, because I, I don't have the end cap on there that you can also buy at Mountain Tune, um, it's, it's, really makes the induction noise uh, sounds great on this car. It really needs that. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I'll be sure to get back to you. But uh, thanks for watching, and we will see you soon. If you're still with us, go ahead and smash the like button. If you're still with me and you're not subscribed yet to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. I'd uh, really appreciate that. Looking to grow this channel to 100,000 if you're still with us, go ahead and smash the like button. If you are not still with, <coughs> shut up. Uh, <laughs> if you're still with us, go ahead and mm, smash. That's not. Uh, <laughs> if you're still with us, just hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. Please. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you soon.